going on? Your boy, Yo Scruggs, back at it once again. Uh, let's talk about it. Usually, I feel like my videos when I talk about uh, Nas get the most uh, views. But I'm more than just somebody that talks about Nas and hip hop. So let's talk about my other, one of my other loves, sports. Die Hard, you know, from Philly, born and raised. Die Hard Sixers fan. We going through something right now, as usual. I feel like it's been like this since the day they, they traded Iverson. And even even Iverson last couple of years, but since the day they since Iverson left, it's been a lot of ups and downs, a lot of weird stuff. We done had a GM get in trouble for having a burner account talking trash about the players, mainly Embiid to be, you know, as far as the big time players. We went through the whole process, you know, that everybody's still killing us over. Um, process years was a weird time for me because that's when I that started literally maybe the year after I, the year before I moved to New York. So I, I was still, I wasn't able to see as much of the Sixers living in New York, obviously, as I could in Philly. So a lot of them process years, I kind of missed out on a lot of stuff. And then, and, and probably a good thing I did miss out on a lot of it because it wasn't working out. You know, the, the whole Mikel Folks debacle, uh, we had New Orleans Noel already on the team, which we got trading Drew Holiday, which I was mad about because Drew Holiday was a good player for us. I was like, and Sixers made a good, a good point guard draft pick kind of the opposite of what Iverson was, you know, um, he, he was more of, a, Iverson was more of a, you know, street ball, you know, uh, score a lot, take a lot of shots, volume score, volume shooter, whatever, and then you had somebody come in, like Drew Holiday, who was more the, you know, quintessential point guard, and we see where Drew Holiday has become, you know, not, not never a guy that's going to be like a perennial all-star or, uh, you know, looked at as one of the top, top point guards, but a solid point guard, good defender, could score, uh, tough. And you see you have uh, Giannis win the championship. And then, you know, I hate Duke. You know, the only other team I root for that's not a Philly team is the North Carolina Tar Heels. And I only root for them because I remember when, in 1988 when they beat Temple, when Temple was the number one seed with Mark Macon and, uh, and all them guys. And I remember Duke beat us with Billy King, ironically, who became the Sixers general manager. I remember my dad saying back then, but the only team that could beat Duke is North Carolina. So North Carolina became like, you know, my other team I rooted for outside of Philly teams. So I didn't want to get um, Jalil Okafor, who was a really good college player, but when he came to the Sixers, I was like, oh, I don't want a Duke dude. I don't want a Duke guy on our team. Anyway, so he didn't work out. And then they drafted, um, they had drafted Joel the year before that. So it was, now it was like, at one point we had Noel, Norland's Noel, Joel and B and over four, three centers. And so, you know, they, they couldn't all play together. The folks thing didn't work out. And people, y'all gotta stop saying that eat the Sixers chose folks over Jason Tatum. No, the Sixers had the third pick. They came to an agreement with the Celtics that they would trade the number one pick and that they weren't taking Tatum, they were taking folks. Now, yes, tip, now, yes, I guess you can say they could have taken uh, Jason Tatum and, and double cross the Celtics, but then you get a bad reputation with the league. Your GM get a bad reputation. That's just not something you do. Teams do this all the time, and you know, in the in, in football, basketball, baseball, hockey, they you know, behind the scenes deals. Like, look, we'll let you trade up. We get these picks, but we guarantee we're not going to take your guy. So, no, stop saying that. I, I hate when people keep saying that. Yes, they technically could have took and Tatum. But that wasn't the agreement. And it, 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 the Celtics, if they had any, even the slightest inkling that the Sixers was going to double cross when they wouldn't even make the trade. So you weren't getting Tatum no matter what, unless you really just wanted to be a shitty organization and get that reputation with you. And then Tatum would have been pissed off too. and Probably wouldn't even report it because he wanted to go to the Celtics. Anyway, so the old Mikel Fultz thing didn't work out. And then we done went through so many different damn people. And then we get this guy, Daryl Morey, who's so overrated. I don't even know why he got so hyped up because he got hardened to Houston, I mean, back in the day or whatever. I, I'm not even sure why that's like a something that GM would get a lot of props for. And now Harden comes to the Sixers at the end and got his way out of OKC, then got his way out of Houston, got his way out of Brooklyn. Now he's doing the same BS with the Sixers. I want Daryl Morey going. I want James Harden going. I don't want either one of them to step another foot inside the Wachovia Center ever again. Y'all both can kick rocks, James Harden. He's, this guy still thinks it's five, six years ago. You're not that dude no more. Yeah, you're still a good player, but you ain't worth the headache that come with it. All the trips to Vegas and the partying and, and so being so dope, so damn indecisive. And then the way them last two games finished against the Celtics with him and Embiid, that basically just tucking their tail between their legs and giving up. 
like I, I, I'm, I'm, and I'm this close to being done with Embiid too. As great as Embiid is, as much as I love Embiid, you know, I, I'm not really into trading great players while they still in their prime. But it's like even at this point, I think Embiid is looking at the Sixers like it's so much dysfunction here. Maybe I need a new, a new place to go. So it's always some bullshit. Uh, kind of the opposite of with it, you know, the Eagles. I feel like was about to go through the same thing with the whole Chip Kelly situation when that didn't work out. But somehow, some way, uh, Jeffrey Lurie and and um, Howie Roseman, they pulled the shit together, wound up winning the Super Bowl a few years later, got back to another Super Bowl. And I just, I don't see that happening with the Sixers until they get another general, man, general manager here that knows what he's doing, president of basketball operations, whatever they call it nowadays. And the other problem you got too is, we got an owner, if you don't know, our owner, Josh Harris, he now owns the Philadelphia 76ers, the New Jersey Devils in hockey, and he now owns the Washington Commanders in football. So you got an owner that's owning three different major major uh, franchises in three different cities. How much focus are you really putting on any one of those individual places? So you can't fire an owner, you can't trade an owner. The only person that can get an owner out really is the other owner. So that's probably not going to happen. So we stuck with this clown. So we probably ain't going to go nowhere still as long as he the owner. So I don't know. I hope they find some way to get Harden out of here. ASAP, Daryl Morty out here, ASAP. And, you know, we start for, I don't care if we even make the playoffs, as long as we start over from, from a point where we don't have them two guys. So leave a comment, leave a message, let me know what you think. Daryl Morey, James Harden, Philadelphia 76ers, what you think gonna happen? Your boy, O'Scruggs.